Uh, good evening, all. Thank you very much for joining Ndogu's Hedging Against the Kenyan Shilling Depreciation. Uh, so today we're going to be concentrating on the ETFs. Um, and so this is the webinar. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today's event. Um, her name is Lynette Musisi, our financial advisor here at Ndogu. She's an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Securities and Investments. She holds a BCom degree in finance from Catholic University of Eastern Africa and uh, an MSc finance concentration investments from Nairobi University. She also has 10 years of experience working in investments and is passionate about wealth management and financial literacy. That's how you know that you're in good hands. And she is keen on using her skills to support and improve relationships um, with money and capital market products. She has helped a lot of clients from diverse backgrounds achieve their financial goals and build long-term wealth. Uh, Lynette, over to you. Good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me. I hope I'm loud and clear. So thank you everyone for joining this webinar today. As per my introduction has been read out, my name is Lynette Chalo, and I work at Novu as a financial advisor. So today we are going to talk about um, what are exchange traded funds? So it will just be an introduction session, short and straight to the point so that you can help you people understand what exchange traded funds are. Exchange traded funds are one of the products that are offered in Dovu. So we have three offerings. We have the savings product. We have the infrastructure bond, which is offered when the government rolls out infrastructure bonds. And then we have uh, exchange traded funds. So we have three offerings and exchange traded funds is one of them. So what are exchange traded funds? An exchange traded fund is basically a basket of assets which includes stocks, bonds, community, commodities or currency where investors can buy a share of the basket just like buying shares of a company. So I'll use the analogy of um, a simple thing to understand is the way we've been talking about investing or saving your money in a money market fund. So when we talk about money market fund, the underlying assets are mainly T-bills, commercial paper, and fixed deposit assets. So when it comes to exchange traded funds, the underlying assets can be bonds, commodities, or currencies. So exchange traded funds are divided into different categories. So we have those ones which track an index. That is the S&P 500. I'm sure most of you have heard that word if you listen to international news. So we have those ones that track an index. That means the underlying asset are securities that track a specific index. On in this sense, it's a security that tracks the S&P 500. Then we have bonds ETFs. So when we talk about bonds ETF, they offer ex exposure to a wide selection of fixed income instruments. These are mainly now the underlying asset are bonds. So then we talk about commodities ETF. So you'll find they track the price of a commodity such as oil, gold or wheat, those are now commodities. So the underlying asset on that ETF is things like gold, things like oil, and things like wheat. These are companies that are now investing primarily on oil, gold, or wheat. Then we have sector ETFs. I believe if you've gone through our, our portal, if you've gone through our app, you've seen there are so many ETFs which are categorized under sector ETFs that are listed there. So there are things like technology, healthcare or finan or financial. So these are just um, a pictorial of a picture from our website. When I talked about sector ETFs, you can be able to see that we have the techie, we have the king of blockchain, we have world, world famous, we have healthcare, we have game call of games. So under these ETFs that are on our platform, they are categorized according to sectors. We also have the gold ETF on our platform, which is also categorized under now a commodity ETF. So then why should you invest in ETF? One of the things, one of the primary reasons why investing in ETFs is for diversification. So ETFs gives you an efficient way to diversify your portfolio without having to select individual stocks or bonds. So when you buy an ETF, you are buying hundreds or even thousands of different securities in one trade. This allows investors to diversify across various industries. Diversification can help safeguard your portfolio against market volatility. So one of the main advantages of investing in ETFs is the diversification aspect. 
this means that when you invest in an ETF, let's say I choose to invest in the, um, in the healthcare ETF. So under the healthcare ETF, you'll find that there are different companies that are listed in the US market that are now listed in that ETF. So these are things like Pfizer, these are things like AstraZeneca, the big, big names in the healthcare sector. So you find that when you're buying in that ETF, you're buying a fraction of each company in in the in the healthcare industry that are listed in the stock in the stock exchange in the US market that offers now diversification then the other reason why people you should invest in ETF is dividend payout so ETFs as long as the underlying stock held within the ETF paid dividends these companies dividends are collected by the ETF issuer and distributed to investors typically quarterly based on the number of shares the investor owns in the ETF so you'll find that different ETFs pay uh, dividends according to different 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 seasons or different time frames. So there are those that pay every quarter. I believe the S and P five hundred ETF pays every quarter dividends. So that means it's an also an advantage way of investing in ETF if you want to acquire dividend. The other main focus of investing in ETFs is currency depreciation risk. So currency depreciation risk is a fall in the value of a currency in terms of its exchange rate versus other currencies. We've seen the Kenyan currency is depreciating and a good way to safeguard yourself from depreciation risk is to invest in now other currencies that are stronger than the Kenyan than the Kenyan currency. So you'll find that now it's a good time to now invest in the US market, in the USD, so that to now hedge yourself against currency depreciation risk. Then the other thing why you should invest in ETFs is cost efficiency. They are cost efficient on many levels. If you had to go to buy, so it's cost efficient in that if you look at the um, are the companies listed in the US market? Now we specifically now talking about, let's say the healthcare. So you'll find there are like, let's say 50 companies or 20 companies list, listed in the US market, but then you cannot be able to buy one stock at the, at the time. So what you do, you go and buy an ETF so as to, for so for it to become affordable for you. So you're buying a whole basket of different stocks that are listed is now the healthcare, the healthcare sector. So it is also cost efficient. Asset allocation is another advantage of why you should invest in ETF. So asset allocation, which means allocating a portion of your portfolio to different asset categories, such as stocks, bonds, commodities, and cash for the purposes of diversification is a powerful investing tool. So if you want to start looking at investing in ETFs, you can look at it in the sense that I want to invest in, um, in, in let's say in stocks. So that means I will choose an ETF that the underlying asset is mainly stocks then you can also choose an ETF that the underlying asset is bonds. And then I'll choose another ETF where the underlying asset is commodities. I think like maybe gold, precious metal, wheat. So now you're, diversifi you're, you're diversifying your portfolio and also increasing your asset allocation so as to minimize risk. The other reason why you should invest in ETFs is se sector rotation. So ETFs also make it relatively easy for beginners to execute sector rotation based on various stages of the economic cycle or market conditions. I believe a few months ago, the gold ETF was appreciating in value. And you could see that if you're someone who was keen on investing in, uh, in, in on investing in maybe using the sector rotation form of investing, you'll have switched your portfolio towards now gold ETF because now it was appreciating in value since the currency was depreciating. And it's believed that when currencies depreciate, people hold people hold current people hold gold and then now gold appreciates in value so it's also a way of now investing in sector rotations you can see also during the covid pandemic the healthcare etf was doing pretty well so it's also you can also think of it in that sense so then the question that most of you will ask after the presentation is how to choose a suitable suitable etf for your goals and risk profile so choosing an ETF depends on one thing. The first thing is to define your investment goals. What are your investment goals? And then you start from there and now you sit down and now write your investment goals. Start by clarifying your financial objectives. Are you investing for retirement? Are you looking to buy a house, funding education, or simply seeking long-term wealth accumulation? 
each goal may have a different time horizon and risk tolerance. So the first thing to look at when you are choosing, when you want to, to now start investing in ETFs is to define your investment goals. So I was talking about understanding your risk tolerance. You'll find that when you're investing in ETFs, it's a very dynamic market. As you compare it to the Kenyan market, ETFs are more dynamic. This is because now you're investing in the US market and the US market is as more is much dynamic as the Kenyan market. Here in Kenya, the market moves on a slow pace. So you can be able to play around with your risk. But then when it comes to the US market, the ma market is very dynamic. That means one information or one information in the news can shift the whole traje trajectory of the industry. And in this sense, the companies that are listed in the in the US market. So you have to understand your risk tolerance and you'll be able to weigh yourself, are you conservative? So if you're someone conservative, you should you should also, also consider now investing in ETFs that you are more comfortable with and that you have done your research and you've been able to see that this, these ETFs guarantee a certain amount of return over a specific period of time. Or you can change your strategy and say, that I'm investing in ETFs for the primary reason of now acquiring dividends from them. So the other thing about is now diversification. Diversification is a key principle of investing. It involves spreading your investments across different asset classes and geographical regions, determine how much diversification you want in your portfolios as it can help you manage risk. So when you're looking for an ETF to now invest in, you have to consider different sectors. So you have to consider which sector is doing well and then balance it off with also another sector so that also to, to now cor correlation correlation of your risk so that your risk is diversified. So what one sector is not doing well, the other sector is pulling your portfolio up so that now there's minimization of risk through now diversification and when you invest in different sectors. The other reason why you should invest, how to choose is expense ratio. So ETFs charge an expense ratio, which is the annual fee as a percentage of your investments. Look for an ETFs with lower expense ratios, and it can have a significant impact on your overall returns. So on our platform, when you choose an ETF, let's say you want to choose a healthcare ETF, you have to go to the prospectors. And now on the prospectors, they give you a guideline on what, on what this ETF is all about, how the performance of this ETF is, how does it compare with other ETFs in the industry, and how does it compare to different sectors. So with that knowledge, you cannot be able to make a decisive decision whether to choose that ETF or not. The other, the other thing to consider when you want to invest in ETFs is research and compare ETFs. That's what I've said. So there are thousands of ETFs available, each within its own investment focus, strategy, and risk exposure. Use online resources and financial platforms to research and compare various ETFs that align with your asset allocation and investment goals. One of the things I usually tell clients when they want to invest in ETFs, because it's a dynamic market and it's a market outside our Kenyan market. So you'll find that if you're in Kenya, it is so easy for you to consume Kenyan news. You can find it on Twitter, you can find it on Instagram, you can find it on Telegram groups or WhatsApp. So it's very easy for you to consume Kenyan news. But then now when you jump to ETF, this is a foreign market. This is the US market. And now it is, it will, you'll find it so difficult for you to consume that news because also there the news moves dynamically and very quickly as opposed to here in Kenya. So one of the advice I usually give clients is invest in a sector which you are more comfortable with, a sector which is easy for you to consume news in. If you are into blockchain, invest in the blockchain, in the blockchain ETF. If you are a medical practitioner, or you're into healthcare, invest in the healthcare ETFs because you'll find that it is more easy for you to consume that news. Then the other factor to consider is performance and history. This information is primarily gotten in the prospectors and the fund fact sheet of each ETF that is listed in our in the website. So you'll find that you review the historical performance of ETFs you are considering. While past performance does not guarantee future results, it can provide insights into how an ETF has performed into different market conditions. So look through the ETF, look through the fund fact sheet, look through the prospectors and now see how has this performance been? What is this ETF they're investing in? What is, what is making it profitable? What does the corporate governance structure of these ETF companies listed there look like? Then from that, you can be able to make a decisive decision whether to invest in that ETF or not. 
The other thing is ensure that the ETF you choose has sufficient trading volume and liquidity. So liquidity is key so that when you want to dispose of your ETF, it is easy for you to now dispose of it. So the first thing to consider is ETF. So ensure is, is liquidity. And this information is got in the prospectors and on the fund fact sheet of each ETF that is listed in our website. Then the other thing to consider is reg review regularly. So you'll find that the US market is more dynamic as opposed to here in Kenya, which I always emphasize a lot. So it's, 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 it's demanded of you to review your portfolio on a regular basis, review your ETFs on a regular basis, primarily every quarter, see how they're performing and see, can you change to a different ETF that is now meeting your needs and your wants, or can you still hold on to the ETF which you are, you have, you have bought into. So then now we'll move to the next section, which is what's the significance of investing in ETF to diversify your portfolio and hedge against the Kenya shilling depreciation. So the first thing uh, which I've emphasized is diversification. When we look at the, um, at the depreciation of the Kenya shilling, we'll find that now you need to diversify your investment as opposed to now putting all your eggs in one basket, putting all your eggs in, in the Kenya shilling. So you have to look for avenues where you can invest in different currencies so as to also diversify, diversify your investment. The other thing is currency di di diversification and also currency, currency risk. So one of the things you need to share, you need to always look out for is currency risk. So you need to also now invest in ETF so as also to reduce your currency risk, which I believe right now it's very hard for you when you're converting Kenya shillings to dollars. I believe it's now at 140. So also thinking about that and saying, I need to reduce my currency risk and now invest in now the global markets. Then professional management, ETFs are managed by professions and fund managers who make investment decisions on behalf of their investors. They exp their expertise can help in selecting a diversified mix of assets and adjusting the portfolio as market conditions change. So one of the things, one of the main advantages of investing in ETFs is professional management. So these are people who have learned the industry. And you also you'll see that when you look at our, our offerings on the ETF on our platform, they are specifically chosen because we have, we have sat down and you have seen these are the ETFs that are doing well, and these are the ones that are favorable for our clients to now invest in. Then the other reason is accessibility. ETFs are traded on stock exchange, making them easily accessible to investors. You can buy and sell ETF shares just like individual stocks, which provides liquidity and flexibility in managing your portfolio. So we can go into the Q&A session. I believe Phyllis can guide us through that by asking the questions, then we can answer. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Lynette, for that uh, very extensive um, PPT. So the first question was explain hedge funds and index funds. So index funds are, index funds are um, like the S&P 500. So you'll find that when you're investing in an index, then when you're investing in, uh, just a minute, I go back. Yes, so index, index, index ETF track a specific index. So they track the performance, like the S&P 500 will track the performance of the, of the 500 listed companies in the US market. So the performance of that ETF is based on that index. So that's what is known as index ETF. Uh, they also asked about the hedge funds. So hedge funds are used to, a, um, um, I think I'll get back to that because there are two definitions of hedge funds. So I'm not sure which one they want to, to, to be conversant with. Yes. So I'll just get back to them on that answer. Okay. Um, so uh, the other question was, what is the risk factors for ETFs? So a good example to how I can say the risk factors of ETF is when you look at the Kenyan Stock Exchange, now the Nairobi Securities Exchange. So the same risks that occur in the Nairobi Securities Exchange, because these are stocks, are the same risks that will incur in now investing in ETFs, because the underlying assets primarily in ETFs are stocks. So when a company is not performing well, the share price will go down. Uh, if the business side, if the corporate governance of these companies are not doing well, 
the share price will go down and that will affect the performance of the ETF. So if it's like we're in, um, like right now, I think we are battling inflation across the world, across the globe. So that will also affect the companies that are listed there. So a good way to, uh, to explain the risk factors are when you look at the Kenyan market and see the same risks that are affected in the Nairobi Securities Exchange mimic the same risk that will be affected in, in, in ETS because the underlying, uh, the underlying securities there are primarily stocks. So that's the easiest way to now look at it. Okay, I hope that uh, question was answered. So the other question is, if you had like 100,000, would you top up your money market fund, uh, which is you supp it's supposed to be the emergency fund, or uh, bonds or uh, two ETFs like gold or blue chip? Like uh, okay. from your expertise, yeah. So that question is, I cannot give a definite answer to that question because now I'll need to sit down with you and do what is known as a needs analysis. So what are your needs and what are your goals? Then from there, we'll be able to sit now, work around an investment product that meets now your needs and also your goals. Because now you can choose to invest in the money market fund, but that's not your goal and that's not your end game. So you have to look, you have to see, you have to, you have to look, uh, I shall say, do an analysis, look beyond and then now work backwards. What do you want to achieve in the future? And then find an investment vehicle that helps you now achieve that goal. Yes. Okay, um, the other one is talk about the recent ETFs, Bitcoin. So someone wants you to talk about Bitcoin in terms of ETFs. The recent one, is it the one that was, I think they are referring to the one that was close, that was, what, what was it called? It was shut down in Kenya yesterday, coined something? Mm, I'm not very sure, but that's what they said. Talk about the recent ETF Bitcoin. So, yeah. Okay, I'm not also sure about that question clearly. Okay, we can get back to them uh, when we're sending out the recording, so that's fine. Uh, the other question was, uh, what is your advice for investing uh, when it comes to conservative versus risky? What is my advice? My advice is always, always be conservative. Always be, always have that safety net of putting your money somewhere that earns your guaranteed return and a guaranteed, a guaranteed return. That's also why when you see our service offerings, they are skewed towards different individuals. So you find that you have the savings product, which guarantees you a certain amount of interest after a specific period of time. And then now we have now the ETFs, which are risky. And then now we also have the bond offering. So all those aspects in your investment portfolio have to be considered. You cannot always be risky, but you also have to be conservative in nature. Like you have to have that, 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 that safety net of putting X amount of money, knowing that it's going to guarantee you a certain amount of interest after a specific period of time. Yes. Mm, totally agree. So basically just have a diversified portfolio where you, you have fixed returns and you also have some things that you're risking with that you can get uh, good returns on. Um, yes. So the other question would be, how can I invest in the S&P 500 in Dovo? Okay. So a good, uh, to answer that question, I believe you have signed up to our platform. So the minimum requirement is a fifth 5,050 Kenya shillings. With that, you can be able to now purchase that ETF. So it's pretty seamless. It's pretty simple. Just top in your account and then buy the buy the buy buy the ETF. Okay. Uh, um, how easy is it to exit, and how would one go about it? Exiting is pretty easy because most of the ETFs that are listed in our in our platform have been verified and the liquidity the liquidity measures have been considered. So once you want to exit, it's pretty easy. You just put in a withdrawal request and you'll receive your money after three working days. Um, in ETFs, do you consider market capitalizations? Yes, we do, but it's an in-depth topic, which I'll, I, can, I can arrange a call with them, then I can get back to them on that. 
Um, I think the other one was what is the minimum investment amount? So I believe for ETFs, that's supposed to be 50-50. Yes, uh, so 5, around, Yeah. Um, then there's someone who's asking about WorldCoin. <laughs> WorldCoin was 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 stopped yesterday, so the government said no. Yeah. Yes. So the other question is kindly categorize conservative investments and. Uh, sorry, guys. There's so many questions coming in. Kindly categorize conservative investments and risky investments. I think we have done that. Yeah. Yes, we have. Okay. Are there commodity ETFs that are doing well in Kenya as of now? I believe you can take that. Uh, let's talk about the hot funds. Yes, yes. So there are commodity ETFs that are doing well. If you subscribe to our newsletter, one of the things we do each and every week, we send you the performance of the hot funds, what we call the hot funds. So we give you an analysis of what, what ETFs have been performing well during that week. And from that, you can be able to now make the decisive decision whether to invest in that ETF or not, yes. So they fluctuate week on week. We cannot have a decisive decision of saying this is the one that is, is doing well. It actually fluctuates. Yeah, but uh, what I would encourage everyone to do is just make sure that you're following us on all our socials and um, just be careful to look at your emails because we always try to advise on what is doing well and what you can invest in for the month. Uh, so the other one is, what is the most aggressive of the investments? I assume uh, the question is in regards to which is the most aggressive investment fund. Sorry, I was on that question. What do they mean by aggressive? I'm thinking the most aggressive fund that they can invest in. Is it on the, on, on the issue of return or... I believe so. Okay. So on the issue of return, now it is also dependent. I believe when you look at our, um, our, our, our portal, you can be able to see, also subscribe to the hot funds. With the hot funds mailing list, if you subscribe to the hot fund mailing list, you can be able to see what funds have been performing well and what funds are not performing well. Okay. Optimize our choices in ETFs or MMFs away from the choices offered by Indovo, e.g. Tika, is it? Yeah, it's Tika label, VUG, and QQM, um, VGT, ETC. And then, um, yeah, let's answer that before we go to the second one. So can we customize our choices in ETFs? So at the moment, you can't customize your choices. So all the all the ETFs listed on the on the platform are are selected. So you'll find that those ones for healthcare, there are those ones for blockchain. So each and all of them are already selected. So you can't cut, customize your own ETF. Um, are the solutions being offered in other international currencies other than USD? Also, other markets away from the market risk of USA. Primarily, we are mainly focused on the US market. Okay. Um, how can I transfer my money from one ETF to, uh, to another if, I, if a certain ETF isn't doing too well? So at the moment, we are trying to, we are in the process of introducing a wallet. So that should be out soon to enable ease of transfer of funds between ETF. So at, at the moment now you'll have to withdraw your money. Then, then now once you withdraw your money, you top it back again, now invest in a different ETF, but you're trying to minimize that whole process by introducing a wallet. Okay, so I, I meant, um, okay, there's someone who's asking about the current tax rates for ETFs in Kenya. I'll have to, have to, have to, have to, have to. Sorry, I have to get back to you on that. Okay, uh, the next one is how do I subscribe to the hot funds billing list? So if mm -hmm. you've registered for this webinar, 
definitely you've been, you've subscribed to our mailing list so be in the lookout for newsletters detailing about the hot funds i think you already handled the taxes issue but there's someone asking about how we declare your taxes um yeah I think the, the other question is about the PowerPoint. So yeah, we, sh we will be sending out the recording as well as the PowerPoint to everyone who registered for this particular webinar. So do not worry about that. You should be getting it by next week. Just a minute, Lina, let me see if there are any more questions before we end. Okay, so Jesus, <laughs> you guys had a lot of questions, okay. So there's this, uh, what capital gains tax rates? That's not something we can answer right now. What are the charges by Ndovu for ETF? So they're on, they're on two categories. So depending on what category you, you, you sign up for, it's just a management fee, a one-off management fee of 1.5 or 0.75%. Okay. In the event of dividend payments, how do I receive dividends and are they sent directly to my bank account? So currently dividends are reinvested back into the client's portfolio. Okay, can you demonstrate any ETF on the platform focusing particularly on its expense ratio, performance and liquidity? So I'm assuming basically they want to see the backend, uh, Lynette? Yes, yes, yes. I, I, uh... We'll get back to them on that because it's something that I believe if, if a, a member of the trades team was here, they'll be more than glad to help us as, on that. All right. Um, okay, so hmm, that one we already handled. Okay, so I think we're done with the question. So if anyone else has any more questions, uh, just feel free to... Uh, send us, you can give us a call. Um, our numbers are going to be shared by Sharon on the chat. Um, and you can also reach us on socials. So yeah, we're here to solve any issues that you might have. I am not seeing any other questions. Oh, okay. There's one that just came in. What is the, what is the average performance of ETFs in 2023? So average, I don't have a specific number. Uh, mostly what I'll encourage, I'll encourage that person to do is log into the platform. Then from that, you can be able to see the performance of each ETF. So either it's, if it's under the healthcare, under the blockchain, you have what is known as a fund fact sheet. So in the fund fact sheet, which is updated every quarter, you'll be able to see the performance of that ETF in 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 during that quarter or during that year. So it will give you um, a simple analysis of the performance of that ETF in three years, in five years, in three months, in since inception and all that. So it's not something I can say out directly, but the information is available on the fund fact sheet of each ETF that is listed on the platform. Okay, so in regards to the tax, uh, guys, we're going to get back to you on that. I can see a lot of you are asking on that. So uh, when we are sending the email that we'll have the recording as well as the PPT, we'll make sure to clear that question for you guys. Um, other than that, we are very thankful that you are able to join us today. Uh, you can, for more information, all you need to do is just make sure that you have at least liked all, um, all our social media platforms, which is Facebook, Instagram, uh, we're also on Twitter and we're on LinkedIn. Uh, we also do send a lot of emails um, every week on a weekly basis. So we always let you know on the hot funds what is performing really well. So if you can do that, that will be great. So you can be well informed when you're making your decisions. Otherwise, we're very grateful that you spent uh, some time to learn. And uh, we're very grateful that we have you as clients as well. Thank you for the support. And we hope to see you in the next event. Be well, stay safe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.